one of the biggest points of confusion in Java is whether it is passed by value or passed by reference. We're going to clear that up once and for all in this video. My name's John, I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear and understandable way. So if you like this video, consider subscribing so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. At the risk of everybody just leaving the video immediately, I will answer the question right away. Java is always pass by value, 100% of the time. But the deeper answer is a lot more subtle than that. What Java actually does is pass references by value. Let's start with a concrete example. So we've got this class cheese. All it has is one int field, a level of stinkiness. So you know exactly how stinky this cheese is. And a getter and setter for the level of stinkiness field. So in our main class, let's create a cheese. My cheese equals new cheese. And we're gonna set its level of stinkiness to 10. So pretty stinky. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and print out that level of stinkiness that we just set. And of course that prints out 10. But what if we added a method down here, private static void increase stinkiness that takes in a cheese object and sets its level of stinkiness to whatever the current level of stinkiness is plus one. And then back up here, we could call increase stinkiness and pass in our my cheese object. We said Java is always passed by value, right? So what do you think it's going to print out here? And it prints out 11. So this method was able to increase the level of stinkiness of this my cheese that we passed in. So you might think here that because Java is passed by value, that any changes to this methods cheese variable wouldn't take effect on the my cheese variable passed into the method. But it did, so what exactly is happening here? Let's demonstrate with a highly advanced whiteboarding session. So first we've got our my cheese variable, right? As you probably know in Java, this variable doesn't actually hold the object what it holds is a reference to a cheese object. So that's basically an address in memory, right? Like 0, 0, 0, 1. So that points to a certain spot in memory that holds your cheese object with a level of stinkiness of 10. So what's happening when you pass in this my cheese object into this method as a parameter? Well, since Java is passed by value and the value of this my cheese variable is the address of a certain object in memory, what it does is it copies that value, it copies that memory address. That's the value of that my cheese object. So because it copies that value, that memory address, this cheese variable ends up pointing to the exact same cheese object in memory as the my cheese variable. So in here, when we increase the level of stinkiness of this cheese, it is changing the contents of this object in memory from 10 to 11. And because these two variables kind of share this same object in memory, that change that we made to the cheese variable in the method also takes a effect in the my cheese variable that was passed into the method. So that's why Java can sometimes look like it's passed by reference, because it kind of seems like it just passed in a reference to that object. But what it's actually doing is passing in the value of the memory address of that object. But here's something really weird. What if we change this up a bit? What if instead we took this cheese variable and set it equal to a new cheese and then set its level of stinkiness to 756? You would think that from what we just saw, it would print out 756 here, right? But it prints out 10. So what's up with that? Why did what we had before change the contents of this my cheese variable? But this doesn't change it at all, and the level of stinkiness here is still 10 on the my cheese variable. The way the variable is passed in is still exactly the same as before. It's still passing in the value of the address and memory of the my cheese object. The key difference is here, where we're setting this cheese variable to be a brand new cheese object. So when the method starts, this cheese object has the exact same address and memory as my cheese. But when we say cheese equals new cheese, what it's actually doing is creating a brand new cheese object in memory and pointing this cheese variable to it. And so it'll now have a different address in memory. It'll have something like a 0, 0, 0, 2. And then it's setting that cheese object's level of stinkiness to 700 and 56. And this association that it had with this original cheese object up here is completely gone. So here, when we're setting this variable to be a brand new cheese object, this cheese variable in the method no longer points to the same address and memory as the my cheese variable that was passed in. So that's why changing this new cheese's level of stinkiness to 756 has no impact at all on the my cheese variable that was passed in. So if in your method you modify the object that the variable passed in was referencing, that change will impact the variable passed in as well. But if instead you completely reassign that variable inside your method, then it'll have no reference at all to the object in memory that was being referenced by the variable passed into the method. That's why it's so important to know that this is how it's working, because these differences in functionality that we just saw can be super confusing to a Java beginner. In some cases it does affect the variable passed in, but in others it doesn't. And it can feel like a complete mystery why unless you know what we just went over. This applies to any type of variable you pass into a method. It doesn't matter whether it's an object or whether it's a primitive like an int or a long, 
100% of the time, Java is pass by value. But when you have an object like cheese, that value it passes in is a memory address, so it can appear to be passing by reference. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you have any questions or I got something wrong, feel free to yell and scream at me in the comments. And if you really want to support the channel, you can do the whole YouTube trifecta of liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.